We continue with our discussion on system representation uh, in terms of uh, the system's constituent elements. Uh, today, I would like to cover reliability block diagrams and cut sets. So let's start with reliability block diagrams. Uh, an RBD, uh, also called a reliability logic diagram, uh, is a logical description of the system in terms of its elements. Uh, and we have seen some examples, obviously, uh, in the last few weeks. Uh, it shows which elements must be up in order for the system to be up. So it's a success-oriented approach. The elements uh, in an RBD are connected logically uh, from start to finish. So we have uh, a, a start terminal and an end terminal. Uh, so it's kind of a two terminal network. Uh, it's important to note and keep in mind that an RBD does not show any functional uh, relation among uh, the elements or any physical connection uh, among the elements or any sequence effect or any process flow is just a logical construct. Uh, an element may appear more than once in an RBD and we'll see one example. Uh, an RBD cannot directly include an element that has more than two uh, states or more than one failure mode. So if you have uh, a, a multi-state element, uh, then uh, each failure mode or each success mode must be represented by a separate element, logically. Uh, we are going to talk about standby systems, standby parallel systems, later. Uh, so uh, just as a heads up, an RBD cannot be constructed uh, for such systems uh, and elements in the RBD do not need to be mutually independent, but uh, when we do probability computations, we must keep uh, that dependent structure in mind. Uh, let's start with a very simple example. This is uh, a determinate truss uh, taken uh, from Ritlefsen's 1979 book. Uh, since this is a determinate truss, uh, any element failing is tantamount to system failure. So uh, the system is in effect a series system and the reliability block diagram uh, for this system uh, would be uh, just the seven elements, uh, the seven truss elements connected in series. So as I said, uh, this RBD that you see at the bottom of the page, uh, it does not uh, in any way mean that that's how the elements are connected. So that's the logical representation of uh, the system. Uh, let's move on to one example that we looked in the previous lecture. Uh, this is a little more complicated than this seven member determinate truss. Uh, we, if you remember, we had a bridge system uh, that involved uh, two pairs, uh, one deck slab and four girders. And uh, the logic that we uh, agreed uh, upon for the bridge was that uh, each of the pairs is essential for the functioning of the bridge as is the deck slab. But for the girders, uh, the, the end girders on either end, girder one and girder four, are essential. But uh, if two fails uh, or three fails separately, then the uh, bridge is still okay. So with this understanding of the mechanics uh, of the bridge, let us uh, continue, or let's uh, build up the RBD for, for this bridge. So, uh, we start block by block. Uh, pier 1 is the first element, let's say. Uh, pier 2 would be in series with that. Uh, the deck slab also in series with that. Uh, girder 1, the left girder, uh, is essential, so it's also in series. Uh, girder 4 is essential, the other end girder, and it's also in series, but uh, girder 2 and girder 3 are in parallel. So at least if one of them works, then the bridge would be okay. So both of them need to fail 
uh, if the bridge uh, has to um, be declared uh, in a failed state.